Cool. So I'll just uh, do a quick intro uh, for those who weren't present in the morning session. Uh, my name is Shubham, and I am a graphic designer, more, more like a visual designer at the moment, uh, and a brand consultant. I have been in the design industry for the past four years, and I am self-taught. Uh, I was a mechanical. I actually have a mechanical engineering degree. So fair bit of freelancing in my life, and I think uh, Roshan over here has a lot of freelancing experience as well. Like uh, we both actually are college mates. Uh, we met in our college fest, and Roshan was designing the app for the college fest, and then I was working on the design bits. So like that is how we met. Uh, so Roshan, would you like to do some intro? Yeah. Uh, well, you could say I was having the past one and a half hour, a kind of my intro. But again, to just summarize of what I do as a professional is I am a mobile app developer. I've been a developer since the past five five and a half years. Uh, my initial days were uh, were of being a mobile uh, were of being an Android uh, developer. Uh, Recently, I've been shifted my paradigm to Flutter app development, and yeah, as as Shubham mentioned, my my professional days were kind of started in back in two thousand fifteen or so, uh, middle of the year. Uh, uh, so yeah, if 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 we have to take this talk any any time, I that would be a perfect uh, timeline because post that uh, fest that we were working in. <laughs> and being all professional and all that, uh, we understood that there was a lot of thing that we were doing wrong. Because <laughs> after, <laughs> because after that fest, uh, we kind of had like a showcase, you could say, uh, for for a college uh, student that was definitely a very nice showcase uh, as a designer and as a developer. But uh, after that, like once we started getting clients, post that we realized we did a lot of mistakes and. This talk is going to be about all those mistakes that that we did and the things that you should avoid. Yashua. Yeah, yeah. So mostly, just to give context on what this session is going to be about, it's it's basically it's basically of course we are going to talk about the benefits of side gigs and why you should start freelancing early on uh, in your career. But it's also about you know what all things you should look out for when you are freelancing and how do you manage freelancing while you are in college, because that is how even we started and we actually didn't have a lot of people to you know uh, ask these doubts and also we are trying to you know help out people who are just starting off so that you get the upper edge. Uh, I think Roshan, there is a question, uh, Mr. Shubankar wants to ask you. So I think you should yeah. maybe clear that out first and not leave him waiting as well. Yeah, right. So Shivankar, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, so that is the question that I had asked myself when I had just started off because um, I had no courses, I had no direction about how to start an Android app development career. Uh, uh, I, I had spent almost like five days just to understand that I have the code that I have written is not responsive because the first three days I had tried to make it as per a particular mobile size. And then I simply, when I shifted to a different size, a different device, Ura app Fatrata. And uh, so, yeah, your question is very, very valid. So, uh, if, if the ideal answer for me back in the day for that question would be uh, knowing which rather than uh, courses which courses are nice which my uh, recommendation would have been which channels are great for having uh, for you to be onboarded in the app development scenes so there are uh, two channels that i would recommend if you like the courses that those channels provide maybe you can buy those so firstly it is uh, academind uh, maximilian schwarzmuller is the name of the person who runs the channel and uh, Though that channel is my rock for learning anything uh, uh, Flutter, anything development. Uh, so Maximilian not only talks about uh, Android development, but he also talks 
talks a lot about different things that you can uh, different things that that are there in the development scenario the secondly if you are trying to be something someone more professional or more expert in the development and all together you can definitely check riso coder uh, uh, i forget the name of the person but riso coder uh, does a very strong work to not only create these videos and long playlists but he also curates those content in a textual or maybe a, a blog pattern uh for for viewers who are comfortable reading those courses so yeah tso coder and uh, academind would be it academind also has a very nice uh, discord channel you can always be there you can find me there and we can talk about the stuff we have created shivam yeah sorry uh for that and yeah let's let's carry on <laughs> no 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 issues no issues i think he was quite eager and waiting as well so thanks for you know resolving his doubt Okay, so cool. So where should we start? Uh, I think the the topic right now is, of course, benefits of why you should start freelancing early on. So 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 I think we should we should firstly tackle those benefits point by point. For example, I I'll just give one of the benefits because like me, uh, like me and Roshan, we both started off uh, in. third year like for me it was almost second third year of my college uh, i was doing mechanical engineering and i was just exploring design but after one year of you know getting that exposure in design I, in the next year itself i started uh, doing freelance and the first thing which i realized when i started freelance is how to talk about money with your friends because <laughs> because there will be cases i mean i started off i i used to make uh, these minimal faces for my friends and of course the first two three were free i even made a one for roshan which was for free of course i i don't remember free dana i hope free tha yeah that was free i'm sorry about that uh, yeah but then uh, with time i started asking like 100 rupees and mind you these these used to take like 5 5 hours at times it was just for name sake minimal but usme kuch minimal tha nahi usme bahut time jata tha but i used to take like 100 rupees and at there at that point i realized that i am just unable to ask for money from my friends like like you have to like uh, for me to make this thing for you you have to pay me x amount of money and even if i am asking that money it is very less Five hours of work के लिए मैं सौ रुपए ले रहा हूँ. That is not ideal, of course. But तू तो मेरा दोस्त है. हाँ हाँ exactly that that is the that is the response you will get most of the times. And I learned how to deal with that response basically by starting off early and understanding how to professionally deal with it. So if if Roshan comes and he tells me like तू तो मेरा दोस्त है, so I would like of course दोस्ती में तो मैं उसको ये भी बोल दूँगा कि yeah but uh, अभी मैं रेस्टोरेंट में काम कर रहा हूँ एंड इफ आई एम द वेटर एंड मैं उसका दोस्त है तो मैं थोड़ी अंदर जाके ऐसा एक अंडा भुर्जी बना के उसको फ्री में ला के देगा दैट डोंट हैपन राइट आई एल बी किक्ट आउट ऑफ द रेस्टोरेंट सो यू इट्स इट्स दैट आफ्टर आफ्टर दे रिटॉर्ड इन दैट फॉर्मेट यू हैव टू मेक दम अंडरस्टैंड लाइक इन अ प्रोफेशनल फॉर्मेट लाइक यू आर यू आर गिविंग योर टाइम इन अ प्रोफेशनल फॉर्मेट एंड you cannot you cannot uh, sustain yourself by giving off free samples on a long run so dost sacche rahenge na to wo samajh jayegi ye cheez ek point ke baad <laughs> because they won't be like are free wale free wale free wale like once you tell okay like i can give you free in like these things in, for free in the beginning when i don't have anything to showcase like मेरा कुछ पोर्टफोलियो है ही नहीं तो मे बी मैं फ्री में तेरे लिए बना के दे दूंगा बट आफ्टर अ पॉइंट यू कैन नॉट सस्टेन दैट बिकॉज देन देन इफ यू जस्ट कीप ऑन डूइंग दैट देन यू कैन नॉट स्केल योर बिजनेस और यू कैन नॉट स्केल योर स्किल्स एंड यू कैन नॉट हैव योर सेल्फ वर्थ बी फ्री फॉर फ्रेंड लाइक ऑलवेज अवेलेबल ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन नॉट बी दैट आई मीन इट ऑल्सो इफेक्ट्स योर रिलेशनशिप इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट because uh, let's say if if you provide me a service for free and uh, i go i i share that stuff with my with my inner circle or maybe maybe with my colleagues 
then there is an expectation created ki oh ye to iska dost hai na so maybe we can do something like main bhi to roshan ka acha dost hu maybe uh, shubhan can help me out over there <laughs> and uh, aise ek dost ke dost ke naam pe uh, there's a big chain that comes back to you and then you feel ki ye kaisa dost hai matlab uh, he is my friend uh, okay yeah i understand maybe he wants to uh, he is trying to come up with his own business i can help him out that's a good that's a good gesture but for after one point you're like you are coming up with your business but you're trying to pull me like little away from my goals so yeah. that is one of the, those uh, uh, questions that starts affecting your dosti so yeah either, yeah, yeah. yeah so. so so basically it's it's like as i mentioned when you start early so the first thing would be of course dosto ko kaise manage karna hai business ke sath discount discount hona right. and the next thing which you will encounter as we mentioned is how to tackle free work this is right. like a taboo subject i think and you will always see people saying okay like whenever whenever you're starting off and uh, if anyone comes to you and asks you for free work mana karne ka like your your self worth is x y z you should always ask for right. Uh, right. like 20000 dollars or whatever like kuch bhi thousands of dollars you should ask always Like you will see a lot of these websites, future and all. Like, hey, it makes sense what they speak. But when you come to But reality, but like, five hours, Shubham, I've put five <laughs> hours of like the past three months of learning and practicing and providing free work to my friends. So I am, I am now at that point. Yeah. That I should not charge. I mean, charge should be charged. And like twenty thousand dollars charge should be charged. So. What what yeah. about that? Yeah, we'll we'll come we'll come to that. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. That is a that is a good argument. Right. But uh, the the point which I'm trying to make is that when uh, when you start off, the subject of free work is not uh, it, it. You shouldn't uh, just say like okay, free work is bad. Free work is bad. First, understand what this free work means and what it will give you. Generally, people take uh free work in a bad notion because gains like see free work you can have to consider this as a collaboration you're collaborating with someone so in a collaboration there has to be equal amounts of gains so if you're giving your services for free for uh, to a client then you have to get something in exchange which has to have that equal gain so for example right. uh the client will say ha ah, Like uh, I can give you three, four more projects. Okay, ये सब लोग बोलते हैं, of course. But the the way to deal with that would be that you take that in written, like in written in writing right. format. Take uh, 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 take that in written, and uh, so that you have an understanding. Okay, this client will give me uh, uh, some more uh, uh, some more connections and all. Opportunities. And actually, the ha huh, the the most important thing I feel. when you're starting off and this free work again is to add something to your portfolio because when you're starting off and you don't have anything right. to show it is very difficult to actually justify your worth because right. as a designer your portfolio is your existence like if if you don't have a portfolio you don't exist as a designer that is actually very important so if you're doing personal projects then you can you might as well do some like these free, free projects for your family or some friend of yours just to add to your portfolio and that can be a massive thing which would lead to a paying client but you cannot expect to you know get 50000 60000 in the first in the first project itself unless you're like some some sales sales expert who can you can pull it, pull it off i mean try it i am not stopping you at all but that right. is and, and, right and, and to add on that uh, for a developer's career perspective so uh, it kind of is is very much similar to how designers have portfolio we have skills and uh, we have certifications and we have uh, like ye mera degree hai and all that yeah i mean those are those are true but uh, like this was actually kind of uh, sufficient enough for four years Years back in the day, where you could have just shown that these are your skills, these are your uh, certifications that you have done, and that would be it. You would have gotten a gig or 
uh, a particular job that you want but um, as time has progressed i am actually an observer and i realize that all these skills that you uh, sh- uh, that you commit ki i know this i know that unless and until there's an execution uh, there's there's no point of you adding those skills in your resume or on your gig site maybe because it all boil i mean both this uh, like app dev and uh, designing these both are practical domains right so until and unless you can show people the execution and the time you have taken to execute that your uh, your uh, basically your armory there's there's no meaning of all these uh, claims that you're taking so it's basically putting uh, 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 a more a more uh, i don't know what the right word is but it's basically your claims are true if you can show these yeah. portfolios or this free works probably yeah yeah so basically just to sum it up in one sentence jo dikhta hai wo bikhta hai yeah right very yeah. simply put jo dikhta hai wo bikhta hai and you need to keep this in mind in your entire career because uh, uh, you need to show your work you need to be out there and if you don't have any work it is very hard to justify and uh, i'm not advocating that you do free work forever nahi sustain hota hai wo cheez of course the only thing which i'm trying to say is understand when to say yes to free work and when to say no to free work that is the most important point uh, which i'm trying to mention so when do you say uh yes you would say yes when you don't have anything in your portfolio you would say yes when the potential client will give you like it will give you a big network to access to you could say yes to free work if it is a job application and if the uh, if the employer wants to see your skill you can say yes to that when would you say no you would say no when the project uh, which you have to work for for example uh a friend of mine comes and tells me are mere ko ye gift card bana ke dena and i know that i won't put this gift card in my portfolio ever and i won't show this to anyone so maybe that right. time i might say no i cannot do that for free because that is not really giving me any gains at all so the right. main thing is to understand when to say yes and when to say no to this free work and after a point once you have a portfolio na then to tum bindas mana hi karo free work ke liye unless it is a new domain for example if i have a portfolio of branding and if someone comes and tells me ke will you do a app like a product design or will you do ui ux so that point i don't have a lot in my portfolio to show ke ha main wo kar sakta hu so maybe i won't do it for free but i would do it for a cheaper amount maybe just to you know uh, discount that person so that they have some confidence okay like aisa nahi hai ki ye aisa rip off bhi kar raha hai iske paas kuch hai nahi dikhane ke liye so maybe i would do that uh, compromise so that even i get this project in my portfolio so it's always about those compromises but you should always understand that in the end you should have at least equal amount of gains through that deal yeah i mean uh, also the crux of it would simply mean uh, like you should understand the value and the price proposition over there because sometimes like projects uh, like if you have a project which is for a developer uh, perspective which is a pro bono stuff but uh, that project is being uh, your name is flashing in in cup in the in a very big banners or somewhere or you are being acknowledged for your work so that always adds to the value of your resume where you can uh, reshare ki okay maybe uh, that work was pro bono but when a different client comes i can simply tell them ki yeah that that work was not pro bono that was we actually charged them something so this is also a, a value price uh, proposition proposition that you can play with other clients and have it you know working while you are dealing with them uh so shubhak there are a couple of questions that we need to answer yeah yeah yep, so yep. shubhak uh, again asks that how, what uh, at which age are you all have come in development career so me what was my age uh, for i was i guess 19 or 20 years old i am 25 years old i thought old. you were saying you were 4 year old i i i <laughs> no i was i was actually calculating what my age was so yeah like uh, honestly there's no specific limit to where you, uh, how early you can start it all boils down how how early you can handle things and that can only happen once you get into the 
uh, into the pond and into the mud itself uh, no one can actually whenever someone tells you ki after maybe 15 year old or maybe or 19 year old can only uh, only those kind of people can jump into these uh, domains they are they could be right but that is coming from their set of experiences you are definitely different your skills are different so i would recommend you to uh, ask this question to yourself how comfortable i am working spending 5 hours of my day or uh, the 4 hours or whatever time you can take out of your day and put into work because uh, th- these these early gigs or side gigs they actually teach you a lot about time management and uh, me and shivang used to Uh, uh as far as i remember we used to wake up very much early in the morning like 4 o'clock at 5 o'clock and do like 2 hours of uh side gigs and then fir saath se 8 baje tak taiyar ho ke college ke liye waqt the and then on our way back we used to plan out like this, this is individually right so i used to finish my college by 1 o'clock or something uh and those so the the next half an hour i used to plan ki main kaisa uh, execute karega baki ka side gig and then i i didn't have much of a excitement college life where i used to go to these clubs and all because i i mean these uh side gigs were my excitement and these were what uh, got me pumped up so i used to spend a lot of my time i used to manage my time accordingly and that is how i got into this development career so so shubhankar again that's a question for you to ask yourself how much time can you give and is that enough for your career um the next question is i believe for you how will the situation yep, yep. be if you are a certified yep. designer with only yep, couple that, projects under your portfolio yep yep that is a very interesting question so uh, of course if you are a certified designer if you have a lot of credentials and you have projects as well under your portfolio to show that okay i'm certified and this is what i know then you can surely you know uh, go out guns blazing and you know you can set a price to your time as well so the main thing is just that uh you cannot expect to have a lot of credibility when you don't have anything under your belt but if you have something under your belt you can show that and you can of course then set a price to your skills over there it's uh, like as i mentioned you you can also have nothing under your belt and you can still set a price but then for that you have to be like a sales whiz <laughs> like you can you can surely close those deals but uh, in reality i have tried that and it it does not work out well uh i hope that answers your question in the next question i think aditya has mentioned how to deal with companies asking to do huge project uh, for take home activity during hiring cause there will be some yeah so this uh, i would like to understand what do you mean by a huge project because if it is a designing project generally uh they would give you one day and generally the project would be like you know make uh, make uh, make a home page or uh, make a logo for xyz thing or make three social media posts for xyz things and it is see th- there are two ways of looking at it over here let's let's have an example i am a brand identity designer okay i have i do logos i do i do uh, branding i do business cards all those things if a company comes to me and if they are looking to hire a visual designer who also knows a uh, home page how to design home pages how to design apps how to design uh, all these ui ux components and they don't see these ui ux components in my port for okay they don't see these things they only see branding stuff so they have the right to come and ask me ke shubhang uh, we like your work but we are unsure if you can handle uh, ui ux projects so we would like to give you a small task okay for the to just to test the that you are if you are fit for these ui ux tasks so that makes sense that makes sense because of course like would you hire someone uh, who you like they would men, like if uh, put yourself in their shoes like even i have been into hiring i know uh, like i know how the how, how this process goes and if you put yourself in their shoes it it is like a shot in the in the dark because you are putting so many uh, resources you 
you're going to be you know closing this deal and all with this uh, uh, employee and you don't even know if he can execute these things so it makes sense then for them to ask you to do this task but then again if they come up and they tell you like make the entire app in 3 days and blah 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 then uh, i think the most reason a reasonable way to deal with that would be you know just to send another mail and tell them ke uh, i would be uh, willing to do three pages for this app and after this project is done i would uh, uh i would like to understand if my project will be taken forward uh will be like will be taken forward or any ideas will be used from my project if yes then will i be credited if no uh i would like to understand how the process like works if if it is no do i do i get to uh, further explore this idea of mine so so uh it's it's how you deal with that situation like these companies will come and go like they like companies want the best deal always they always want the best deal in the end you have to negotiate yourself out of these things and you have to you know you have to understand one thing puchne mein kya jata hai like you have to take that call at times you have to ask things out like the worst of course that can happen is of course they would say no but if they are saying no for a simple question like this which concerns you and which which can you know lead to you being exploited then i think it is good that you did not join that company i think roshan you are on mute you are on mute roshan you are on mute right but uh, i think aditya uh, adding to that uh, that negotiation or that questioning is also a part of your uh, caliber test because as you uh, mentioned like let's say they are asking for an entire website to be designed or to be developed so you know that if you know that the time given by them is not suitable or ideal for designing an entire website which probably is so oh, there and there you are tackling their uh, answering them that he uh, boss this uh, duration that is uh, giving me is maybe not enough for my work or not enough for designing the entire website this would be my uh, uh, expected time taken if that's okay with you guys maybe we can take it forward because uh, like apart from your execution or apart from uh, your dis- uh, your experience and all that uh, your ability to understand how how much time would it take to do a, to execute a task is also something which a pro- pro- some uh, someone who's hiring or a product manager is wants to know because if you know how much time you are going to take for a particular task so down the line whatever projects are there they can uh, simply ask you directly ki ye project aaya hai how much should we code them or how much should we uh, how much time should we take so it boils down yeah. to you to understand how much time you will uh, take for a particular task and being completely honest with them it's okay if it goes or it stays that's a different question but um, honest, honestly if you just tell them ki uh, this time is not enough maybe or if it's enough then it it works but if it it is not enough you can uh, uh, maybe negotiate with them ki itne time mein karke de sakta ho kya if not then yeah. there are a lot of opportunities in the market yeah yeah generally companies will try to stress test you generally that is what they do and right. it right. is fair on yeah. their end because they want the best deal as i mentioned they want the best deal if you put yourself in their shoes they will just give you the shortest deadline because that is what is appealing to their clients the shortest deadline like fatta fat kaam aa raha hai aur kya chahiye humko so uh, of course they would like to stress test you but in the end if if honestly uh, if it is in you mean like if it is just not possible to do it or execute it in that time frame then you should surely get back to them or like just like just talk to them and understand like is this fine if they say no then again the ball is in your park it depends on how you proceed with it do you do it do you not do it it's up to you then yeah so i think there is again another question by rahul are there any chance are there any chances client will ask sample file if you send that sample file later the client will not pay you <laughs> so what should keep in mind before sending files means i know this happen with logo designers they have worked abroad clients yeah see so i think uh, if you have ever used fiverr na ye bahut hoga kabhi kabhi i don't um, depends actually fiverr bhi thoda acha hai actually 
but uh, it, this happens it has happened with me a lot two three times actually and that is my learning process and the way you actually do this is see there are two ways of doing it firstly if you are uh, if your client is asking for a sample file okay you need to understand why he is asking for a sample file the first thing you would ask him is that why do you need a sample file uh generally the answer would be to understand your caliber if you can execute it now when will the client try to understand your caliber when you don't have that work in your portfolio okay if you don't have any logo designs in your portfolio the client has all rights to ask you ke bhai mujhe kuch to batao like what will i be getting i don't understand so kuch to wo log puchhenge so then uh, of course you make that sample file but then now the uh, now the client sees it so how would you protect it the simplest way would be just put up giant as watermark on it and send it to the client like that is how i used to do it in the earlier days or the second thing the second thing you can do it is to keep all these conversations nicely documented on mail and before you even make the sample file you you clearly mention it that this sample file will be used for judging my uh, uh, judging the caliber of this project if it does not get taken forward uh, the client cannot use this file for any future purposes and if it is spotted any legal, like xyz legal actions will be taken against it okay so uh, now this might sound ke are oh shit like sa ye to bahut bahut deep chala gaya but i i'll tell you these these mails na the uh, mails are totally applicable in court and even right. though if you won't go in court to fight against this this at least you know asserts some type of dominance that you know your shit and you cannot be played with as a time pass man so right. that is right. like there are two ways i think the simplest way again uh, would be just to put a giant as wa- watermark on it but doing both of these things is the ideal way watermark bhi dalo right. mail bhi likho sab clear cut samne rakho and and uh, rahul if you have like a very niche example a niche cases like let's say uh, whenever you ask your client ki why do you need those uh, files design files and they come up with like ki we want to see how it looks on a uh, a particular let's say they want to create badges or t-shirts and they want to see how your design looks on it so uh, uh, so it would be recommended you share these uh, there are a lot of tools that you can use to share your a design and have the access of your files with you while also sharing the designs a good example could be figma and shubhan can cater to that uh, example very well that uh, sometimes when we have clients and they want to see the progress or maybe uh, a, a mock up maybe so what we do is we uh, s- some we set up our figma files in such a way that uh, there are progress files uh, available there but also uh, like a uh, mock ups available there too so that they even they get like a general idea of what their cases but yeah this is like a very very niche example now yeah i think uh, even abhay has added uh, abhay has added another question over here uh, sometimes a client will text at the morning in the evening mein logo de do happens it happens to all all of all of us happens to the best of us happens to the worst of us sabko hota hai sabko hota hai so how do you deal with it uh, you can just give them a very simple example uh imagine you having uh imagine just a second i just a second now i'm getting a call uh, yeah just uh imagine uh you're going to a doctor and you need you need to get like you have a leg fractured and you need you have a football match in the evening you go to the doctor and you you will say bhai mera match hai aaj sham ko mere ko pair theek kara do abhi naya pair laga do kuch bhi kar do so what will the doctor respond to you tum tumne pair toda hai pehli baat to tumhara match aaj hai and tumhe pair theek karana hai and tum mere paas aayo pair theek karane and tum abhi you are telling me how much time i should take to heal your leg basically the point being that when you're coming to an expert for their services you cannot tell them how much time they should require 
the expert will tell you how much time it will require for them to execute your service right and i hope this example helps you out because whenever a client tells you this just respond to them with this example that will and also make- like abai uh, you can i mean this uh, this exam i mean your case also comes with the uh, uh, with the line that uh, we are trying to maintain a good relationship and uh, so y- you feel obligated and all that so i mean uh, relationships all kinds of relationships works two ways so even if it's like a client and uh, even if they're your client and you're providing a service uh, you should certainly try to make them understand that this relationship works both ways and if uh, if we are <laughs> expecting some sort of uh, deliverables you need to understand how much time we take like shubham mentioned over here so yeah, yeah. Th- that psychology you need to maintain that ki if i am ready to adjust yeah. the client is also ready to adjust a bit for me yeah. yeah and there are there are ways of also you know uh, see so you can also tell them like i understand you need it at xyz amount of time but the best i can do is this time but uh, i'll have to inform you that if i give it to you in this time this amount of time there might be some issues in the quality of work because i will be rushed and because i will have to put extra hours on this to complete it under this deadline i would right. like to take uh, some uh, extra amount which will be like a 10 or 20% extra because of this deadline crunch because it is going to physically hurt me to do uh, uh, this um, uh, this amount of work in this short amount of time the mental stress the punishment yes mental stress sab kuch hota hai ek sath hota hai i think then again jake has a question which says how to deal with a client using your work poorly say the logo is stretched or so on uh, i think in my session i covered this quite well you actually once like once you're done with these projects once you're done with even your logo designing project you actually provide your client with a brand guideline which mentions how they should be using that logo like how right. uh, it should not be stretched on what colors will the logo be used uh, what is the typography so that is how you're handing it off to your client and af- even after that you spot that your client is using it poorly you can maybe give them a message give them a call even after that like that is of course not on you to give them a call and you know uh, police them that a tu galat kar raha hai like it's not it's not your responsibility your responsibility is done you right. have given them the brand guidelines but you can be a good friend you can help them out but still if they are doing that then it is on them like you have given them everything and still they won't listen then it's out of our reach all right uh yeah like you need to uh, the the amount of uh, so one way to avoid this is the amount of time you need you put into the documentation or the amount of time you uh, put into the uh, handover of uh, all the files and everything should be a bit more if this is happening very frequently because uh, uh, sometimes the market will is as such that okay you have done your work right why should i like even bother but in the end it's your portfolio and you want to showcase it somewhere and your uh, baby is being spoiled like somewhere could stretch they're stretching their uh, logos your uh, work so yeah that definitely impacts your uh, portfolio so yeah you can definitely increase the time while you are handing it over to the client teach them how to use them use that particular file or so because in the end they have their own business and they are not into the design business so the the it's it's partly your responsibility but it's not an obligation that uh, that you fall under that is what yeah like if you do your 100% and still still the client is fucking up then it's it's not your it's like you can it's out of your reach uh that right yeah, i think let's move on with the topic by the way like we give you are getting a lot of questions now we have solved some questions we can talk about some other things when it comes to side gigs and i think uh and like a a good a good topic would be you know uh how to learn new things like uh, how to learn new things and how like even roshan can touch on this and how to learn new developing languages because that is a very important aspect of freelance you once you are in the freelance business you need to understand that you cannot settle 
you cannot settle because right. every other day there will be a new designer every other day there will be someone who will be you know taking taking your share of clients for themselves right. so you cannot settle once you're in the freelance it is stressful yes it is stressful i won't deny that but if you are into that challenge then you would surely enjoy this so then right. how do you acquire these skills uh a quick why am i getting 10000 calls that to from random numbers anyway yeah, sorry we get <laughs> so, sorry we get hits yeah so i was saying uh basically where was i what that yeah so when i started off actually i started off in uh, 11th standard i actually started off with a youtube channel like i used to watch a lot of youtube and i just uh, used to watch a lot of pewdiepie jacks films and all and i was like uh, like even i want to do this so like i just downloaded some crack software like adobe uh, premiere elements and i made some weird as dubbing videos like telebrands i made some telebrands parodies uh, all these things so what i understood from that is while i learned video editing i eventually had to learn photoshop because i had to make the thumbnails and how did i learn photoshop i actually pewdiepie used to make a lot of these thumbnails as well so i actually w- used to watch his videos while he used to make these thumbnails and i was like okay let's give it a try and like looking at these examples uh like i can like in short i learned i tried to learn what i visualized like what i saw i tried to learn that and like i used to make these weird as thumbnails and that is how i even got to know photoshop once i got to know photoshop then i started making memes on photoshop and then like from memes i got like i got the i got some rep in college and once people started noticing me in college i got in the graphic design community for the fest and that is where i started learning poster design and like then the ball starts rolling like Right, once right. you once you start learning one thing that that thing will eventually lead to another thing if you are open to you know you know uh, if you are open to understand and learn things which are quite visually uh, available to you the best uh, another example which i can give like uh, the best way i think this is the uh, the best way to learn anything or be good at anything uh, in a quick in a quick uh, uh, format would be uh l- let me give you an example if you want to be great at logo design uh i would suggest the best approach would be follow all the best designers in the world uh, look at absolutely uh, like uh look at uh, all the best logos out there and understand what really makes them good what really makes them stand out like why are these designs considered so good so once you understand what is good you will always go in the direction which like which is making these logos good once you understand what is good you would never like uh, consciously make a decision which will lead to a bad design because you know what a bad design is so understanding what a good design on a va- bad design is the most important thing uh, in like if you want to get good in design and how would that happen that will only happen when you once you expose yourself to a lot of good design if you want to get good in music expose yourself to a lot of good music so like that is how you would learn right uh yeah like over here i would like to barge in and talk a bit about uh devs so us devs don't have such uh i mean don't get me wrong but we don't have such rainbow environment altogether our our uh, environment works in uh, very black and white scenarios and Uh, ones and zeros so so for us to learn new skills is always like uh you, the the questions that comes to my my brain when someone when i even i ask myself ki okay i'm a good i'm a good uh, mobile dev maybe maybe there's something uh, I, more i want to achieve and there's this particular framework that i like or there's this particular technology stack that's very interesting and it's booming in the market and but i don't have any time or uh, to go through all those courses and uh, sit and create uh, you know sample projects and work on it so uh, i mean to some extent you can do that you can 
take our time again this is like a time management thing that comes in uh so i would actually would like to share how i uh came into this whole uh, learning new skills how i adapted that into my lifestyle is uh so like oh, after my graduate like de- even during my graduation times i i was very i was introduced to the entire development scene comparatively very late uh, in my second year and uh, so basically yeah i had like a, a like a drop in second year and i was like okay man like six months ho gaya and i've already received a very nice uh, result in my exams so let's do something about it let's let's not just spend the next six months roaming and doing here and there like kuch bhi karte kar sacha let's do something productive right so uh, i the reason i've got i i had got a drop was because i uh, wasn't very much prepared for my exams and the reason was i was not able to write all the notes and uh, simply collect them and you know learn things so uh, i i would i was just introduced to these bunch of uh, uh 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 classes where they teach you or courses where they teach you app development and i was like maybe if i had an app which would collect my notes for me uh, it would help me uh, uh you know not drop the next year or in the next six months and help me pursue my degree which is which is very useful now uh so so that idea actually so i had like very very basic understanding of these courses and i had hardly gone through the course material of uh, 72 to 100 hours and for a developer's perspective that is very very less so uh, i i started developing this attitude that okay let's just take this task and on the go maybe i can understand so even though that notebook app was like you know just like 5 5 hours ka work now but back then it took me like couple of weeks which uh, which was which i used to do at the college lab itself and from there i got notice and all that so uh, so 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 my point was that i had like very less hours of understanding about android development design uh, as this again being a practical field only when you jump into the waters you understand how deep it is how how much know, how much you know to swim and how do you learn to swim is only with practice and continuous efforts because uh even to date we have like i have a lot of work which is just shelved off uh which is done uh, in different kind of technology stacks but uh it was not properly done maybe you could say or i failed in doing that but these portfolio projects these tasks that you pick up which you don't know but on the go you do that and execute that it helps you learn it 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 helps you learn these new skills because uh like yeah time management is always a thing but picking up tasks and putting pressure on your head ki i need to submit this in like two days but i don't know anything that 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 hammer on your head uh, keeps you reminded about the pressure and in that pressure i started to bully myself ki nahi tujhe karna padega you have to submit and only then you can learn uh, about that particular skill that's not the best or very positive uh, way of learning things but uh, bullying yourself is something i used to do uh yeah and one one other thing like i would like to add is uh, for someone who's a bit more intermediate in their development scene all programming languages are the same honestly the only thing which is which is uh, different about that is the semantics because uh, the essence of development is not actually programming language it is how you handle your data how do you handle your algorithms and all your data structures and flows controls and those things because uh, it's like you're trying to build a building with a sand or like proper concrete and steel so oh, the logic stays the same you just migrate from wood sand concrete or whatever the better technology is it all boils down how do you understand a particular task and how do you understand the controls and algorithms so yeah those points are uh something very much essential for a dev while they're switching uh, languages of switching frameworks yeah yeah i yeah. think by the way we are probably out of time oh, we are okay. i think <laughs> about nine but uh i think riddhi had a question as well is cold emailing a bad approach uh never actually <laughs> What i have mean? different i i actually have different views for that uh so i think this will take some time if i actually get into the details of it 